Hello, <laughs> and welcome to my Daydreamers workshop. This is a weekly workshop I'm doing right now that is free and is meant to help you connect with a more easeful writing process that is centered around what comes naturally to us as humans when we're in a like free flowy creative state. And um, for me, that's daydreaming. I daydreamed a lot as a kid. I also have ADHD. But like when I started teaching screenwriting online a couple years ago, during the height of the pandemic, when we were all like stuck at home, it's like, okay, how can we bring creative adventure to wherever we're at right now? And that's when I personally reconnected with daydreaming because I had some memories of like when I did it in second grade, when I was working on this little like movie idea. And um, yeah, so that's why we're here. If you're skeptical, I want you to know that it truly works. Like it's stupid how much it works considering how much we're trained as humans to be like, it has to be hard. Like you have to effort, <laughs> like no pain, no gain. And I'm like, no, uh, less pain, more gain, I believe. So today we're going to be talking about body love and shower thoughts because I think why daydreaming, I think why daydreaming maybe comes easier to children is because they are more embodied than a lot of adults who have been kind of hardened by experiences. Adults become protective and kind of guarded through emotional experiences and like we we just kind of shut down or we turn off those like frivolous sides of ourselves especially if they're not received very well or warmly even like only a couple times we can shut down from that. This week's podcast episode is about healing art scars. And I define an art scar as like a negative experience from you showing someone your art and that making you be like, I don't ever want to do that again. <laughs> um, so, so when we focus on body love and shower thoughts, like everyone's familiar with shower thoughts, but there's truly so much wisdom in like, embracing shower thoughts because that's daydreaming you're daydreaming in the shower that's why you get such good ideas in the shower so much that they have a name and they're called shower thoughts um and i was thinking about shower thoughts and i was like what do the people of the internet say about why shower thoughts work so here's what i found This is from Headspace, which is a meditation app. Why do I have my best thoughts in the shower? Studies have found that after a period of mind water wandering, man, I am having a hard time speaking. I'm so sorry. Okay. Studies have found that after a period of mind wandering, the mind makes more creative connections between bits of information you already know. As for the shower, it's kind of the ideal epiphany incubator. Not only does the warm water elevate your mood, you focus your intention inward. And I think that's really true. The shower is just this special time where it's just you and your body, like you're naked, unless you shower like that guy in Arrested Development. <laughs> and I think he's a never nude. Anyway, he doesn't matter. It's just a funny reference I'm enjoying. Uh, he wears Daisy Dukes. He wears jean shorts in the shower because he's a never nude. He's like the opposite of a nudist. <laughs> Okay, but probably when you shower, it's just you. It's just your body and it's just the water. And this can be just really grounding. Even if you have a hard time connecting with your body, even if like you dread doing yoga, you don't like it. Maybe it's like, you know, you always want to exercise, but it somehow becomes too stressful to be able to actually do it. Like... Um, I find the easiest way in is just the best way in. Like, make it easy for yourself. We're doing creative work. Creating is so hard. It's also so brave. Let's make it easy on ourselves when we can. So shower thoughts are so great. 
Um, it's just a great way to honor your body by giving it something that feels good. And then it naturally kind of combines it with this like meditative time. Cause like you're in there for however many minutes and you're there solo. And that's where these thoughts come. Cause you're just kind of in dialogue with yourself, but there's just a lot of space. And you're also maybe like washing your hair or using soap. And so you're doing this activity, but kind of passively. So then your mind can do just other stuff in the background and kind of make those connections. And I believe that's where shower thoughts come from. All right, here's another answer. This one's from uh, an author on Cora. Why do I get such a good ideas in the shower? The warm water and sensory experience of showering can help to relax your mind and reduce stress which can in turn make it easier to think creatively. Finally, the lack of distractions in the shower can allow you to focus on your thoughts and let ideas come to the forefront of your mind. But yeah, the main thing I want you to take away from this is getting really good ideas for a script project, for a story you're working on. It doesn't have to be efforted to get those good ideas and I would encourage you to consider that if you come from a more easeful place where you're just being rather than doing something, trying hard, where you're just being you and you get ideas in that state, for me at least, I find those ideas to be very true to who I really am. Like, you know, when no one's watching or like, <laughs> uh, yeah, who I am when I'm just delighting myself. Like, that's why I love shower thoughts. That's why I love teaching this daydreaming, daydreamy writing style process. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I think shower thoughts come about essentially because you're showing love to your body in a way that's just for you and it just feels good. And even if you have a hard time centering yourself in your body, like the warm water really helps you because it just feels so good and comforting. And, um, but there are also lots of other ways to love your body. You can do it through lots of different things and you don't have to at all do all of these. I want to make that very clear. But when I kind of want to get creative juices flowing in me, juices, um, here are some things I'll try. <laughs> Honestly, the first thing I prioritize is sleeping a lot. I like to be well rested when I do creative work. So I often will prioritize a nap and then working. Like, let's say I have four hours. If I'm tired, I'll, I'll like sleep for two hours and then use the other two hours to do the creative work I wanted to do. I'm not someone these days who works myself for those four hours if I'm tired. Like several years ago or when I was in grad school getting my MFA, I would work myself hard. I would deprive myself of sleep because I was like efforting. But I found that after doing that for like two years during this program, I became disconnected from myself in a way I didn't even realize because I just wasn't taking care of myself. And so like... I wasn't really as embodied as I could have been while writing because I just was like kind of asking my body to like numb out. I was like, you don't get sleep, just you only get coffee and like adrenaline. So I love naps. I love sleeping. I love sleeping in. I also love, I think in the UK they call it a lion, like L-I-E space I-N, like a lion. Like in America, we say sleeping in, but when we actually do that in America, <laughs> we're not sleeping. We're just lying in bed, relaxing. And so that's why I like the UK's phrase for it, which is a lion. It's like, yeah, lie in bed. <laughs> do that. That is its own activity that deserves to be honored. I do that a lot these days because it's just, I find it to be very helpful and what I'm currently working on is not giving myself a hard time for doing it, for like 
taking a half an hour pretty much every morning to just lie in bed. And my friend texted me something like how he's like working on like on his days off when he doesn't have to go into work, like really just letting himself stay in bed as long as it feels good to, um, or whenever he has time to just like, I'll get out of bed when it feels right. Like that kind of self love to me is so nourishing and it just is rewarding creatively. Um, other things you can do to connect to your body and feel embodied and encourage kind of shower thoughts are, motion and running like um yesterday I had a stand-up show that I was nervous for because it was 15 minutes which is longer than my usual like seven minute sets so I went for a run because I was like I'm gonna tire myself out like I wanted to give my body kind of a state change and I also knew that I would take a shower after I went for a run so I had that built-in kind of like meditative body love time built into my plan for the day. But what I like about running is like, it is just like a refreshing state change. And, and I truly enjoy running. Like I want to be clear, don't make yourself run. If that like makes your soul sad, I don't want you to do that. But, um, but for me, running is fun and I don't do it super long and I don't time myself and I just kind of run for however long I feel like it. And then I don't, but I like to run to music and that kind of like juxtaposition of like, for example, yesterday it was snowing. So it was just like really, really pretty. It was also just like a very pretty winter scene that I wanted to enjoy by running. And I usually walk my two dogs, but they just like sniff a lot and the flow isn't. And I was like, no, I want to run. Like I want to feel like some flow. So that's why I did that yesterday. Um, I think it really did help me prep for my stand-up show. I took a shower after that and then I went to working on my like notes for the the bits and jokes I wanted to uh share (laughs) make sure I didn't forget so yeah running walking is so good um being any kind of outside being outside in any kind of way is super great there's just more like life force outside And I'm saying this as quite an indoorsy person. So like, I get it. (laughs) I love to be cozy inside. And I'm not like just a natural person to be like, I'm going to go on a hike or like, I have to go on a hike like this many times a week. It's like, no, I can, I can be, I can hibernate and be like, oh, look at the time. I've been inside for a month. But even just like sitting on my deck with my like big winter coat for five minutes, 10 minutes just like sitting, meditating. That's fun. It's quite cold. So I haven't been doing that this month, but when it starts to warm up, I'm looking forward to like sitting on my deck and yeah, just having that easeful way to connect to my body and nature. But all these little things, all these little kind of mindfully selected things you decide to try or do to just feel more embodied, they really pay off when it comes to daydreaming, when it comes to creative work. Other things that I love for connecting with my body, and this is just like a simple one, but really wearing soft, comfy clothes when I do creative work. (laughs) Like I pretty much don't write while wearing an underwire bra anymore. (laughs) That doesn't feel authentic to my process, so I don't do it. Um, But soft, comfy clothes make me feel like, you know, loose and flowy and like I'm still in bed and it's so cozy. And speaking of lying in bed, being great for creative work. The other day, I had such a good daydreaming session for my Jesus script. I'm writing a biopic script about Jesus. That's a queer love story. And I get so excited about it. It's so cute. Um, I haven't felt this way about a project in a while. So it's quite a refreshing little creative love affair I'm having with myself. But what happened the other day was I had just kind of a, a desire to do some kind of playful dream, dreaming, daydreaming work with this script. 
So I went to bed and I wrote myself a note <clears throat> for the next morning where I said, Jesus script play, because I just wanted to remind myself in the morning that I wanted to play with ideas for my script, my Jesus script before I did anything else. Because I thought that would be creatively rejuvenating and I wanted to see how that would affect my day if I started with just kind of like this pure creative work of like a project that's just a passion project for me. So the next morning I wake up, I am really tired. <laughs> I decide I'm going to go back to sleep and that the mental image I had of me like coming down here to my office, writing, typing on my script like doing Jesus script play that way, I realized like that probably wasn't going to happen. And at first I was like, oh, I really wanted to work on the script. But then I was like, wait, just because I'm not going to go to my office doesn't mean I'm not going to be able to work on my script. I was like, the story engine is here and here. It's always with me. So I was like, <laughs> as I was falling back asleep, because I did decide to get more sleep, I was like, you know what, as I'm falling asleep, I will just invite in thoughts about this Jesus script. And in particular, the like, the beginning. So that's what I did. And it was really lovely. I don't know if you've ever like, kind of daydreamed on purpose or, or with a little bit of intention, like right before you fall asleep, right before you fall back asleep. But it's a beautiful time where your your mind is just very like soft and it's truly like en about to enter like a dreamland. And so you get these kind of like connections and new images. For me, they just come to me as images. Sometimes I'll hear like a line of dialogue or like just a, a voice or something that a character says. Maybe I don't even know who the character is, but I just hear a line that kind of grabs me. Um... This time it was just images, but they were kind of juxtaposed in a way where I started to like see how the beginning of the script could come together and how I could cover a lot of this kind of backstory with Jesus pretty quickly. So I probably daydreamed about my script for 10 minutes as I was lying in bed, falling back asleep. I fell back asleep. I woke up like an hour and a half later and got up, got my bowl of cereal, got my coffee, got my gel pens and my rainbow journal that I'm pretty sure was made for like a middle school audience. Um, but then I wrote this, this, which is green text, purple text, green text, purple text, green text. And I just alternated because this felt like a natural way to depict <laughs> with colors the different the different scenes I was cutting between. Basically, the green text on this piece of paper is present day, and then the purple is a flashback. And so, like, Jesus is really sad in the present day, and then he's having these happy memories of being with this very special person to him in purple. And I just wrote it out, and I didn't really know how much I was going to write when I started writing, but I just had those 10 minutes of daydreaming that I'd done. I had images from that daydreaming sesh. I wanted to just like kind of capture them really quickly. Um, the way I wrote it was in present tense because scripts are written in present tense. So that that's just like an easy way for me to do it. I also like it because it's just like, <laughs> like Jesus, what did I write? Like, I don't want to like say exactly what I wrote because I'm, I'm becoming more private with this project. So I want to honor that. But uh, but here's an example of just writing in present tense. Jesus walks up and sees John baptizing people in the river. So just writing it in present tense like that. I'm just writing what I see the characters doing. And, um, and I actually color coded it because then in pink, this other character comes in. So she gets her own color. But yeah, I was super happy with this. This felt like kind of a touchstone moment where I was like, this feels like really close to kind of what lights me on fire about this project. So that was really special. And what I love about this was that I found this to be so productive and so helpful and so much more productive than like past sessions I used to do, you know, in grad school where I'd like force myself to like 
do creative work for six hours, you know, and I'd get like just kind of dry, brittle ideas that weren't really like full of life or freshness, you know, but this, this, I was like, this felt so alive to me. And it also felt so unique and like something only I could write. And that is just a very special feeling. I felt really in flow. I felt really connected to myself while writing this, which is just a really creatively nourishing experience. It's just a really nourishing human experience to have. So I did that. And there was 10 minutes of daydreaming. And then like, I probably wrote up the ideas from the daydreaming sesh over maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. I just kind of wrote until it felt like I, I'd come to a natural spot to like end and it ended up just being one full page. Um, but yeah. But yeah, what led to this was 10 minutes of daydreaming in bed as I fell back asleep and 30 minutes of having a fun time taking these colorful notes with my sparkly gel pens. Um, I was still in my PJs. I was only accompanied by my bowl of cereal. And I paired, like, let's just see energy with with uh, writing down what I saw in my daydreaming sesh. And that was it. 50 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe not even 50 minutes. Very productive. I... Yeah, it's like... This set me up in a way where I'm excited to see what happens next in this story. And like, let's say later today, I take a shower. It's like, I can just kind of picture where I left off, like these characters and just like, just kind of see, just see those characters doing what they want to do. No pressure, but I often find myself being just kind of amazed at how in just being kind of open with this, let's just see energy something really beautiful comes about that is just very easeful and uh, and so authentic to me. And that's the most, I think that's the most exciting part is just that I can do such authentic work from such an easeful place. It's so cool. And I didn't learn that in my MFA program. Like I taught myself that because I was stubborn in in believing that there had to be an easier way to do creative work. And, uh, yeah, and I'm really grateful that I have those memories of daydreaming about a little movie story idea in second grade because that became a, a touchstone for, like, my dream process. And I really just kind of expanded that, found a way to connect to it in my present day, and expanded it, and it's just, it's, just been the most rewarding thing I've ever done for myself creatively. So that's why I love hosting these little daydreaming workshops. And I'll post this recording on YouTube. And yeah, I'm going to sign off soon because I am going to go back to bed. <laughs> I spent some time doing body love stuff last night because I went out dancing, which was super fun. I went to a Shrek rave, Shrek like the ogre. I didn't know there was a Shrek rave. <laughs> in my city but my friend was like they're doing a shrek rave they do it every six months we should go and i was like a thousand percent i'm going to shrek rave so i did that i danced i really danced i love dancing i don't go as often as i used to but i'm trying to get back into just doing it more and it was great and i just got to a place where i felt really like just flowy i loved my cute little like fiona outfit <laughs> and um and yeah, so now I'm going to go show myself some more body love. I'm going to go to sleep and sleep a little more. Then maybe walk the dogs and take a shower. Um, edit this little recording, put it up on YouTube. And just kind of flow through my day and see, see what comes about. I think what daydreaming really is about is practicing self-trust in a way that we're so often not encouraged to do as an, as adults or, or also as kids, I guess. Yeah. So it's okay to sleep. It's okay to go back to sleep. It's okay to listen to your body and be like, what does my body actually want right now? And my body's like, right now it's like, I would like more sleep. 
and I will let you know what I want next after that. And I'm like, okay, let's do it. We've got time. Let's go back to sleep. It's great. I don't care that it's 1230. My body wants sleep. I can give my body sleep. I will honor my body with sleep. And when I do that, my body honors me with just creative honesty about what I really want to create. It, and it's, it's just good. I'll leave you with two more little body love suggestions, but these are ones that do cost a little bit of money. So they're like not at all necessary, but if you're in a place where you're like, you know, I'd like to really do something kind for myself. I find that connecting with a massage therapist, I feel very safe with and going to see them for sessions every now and then is really great. I also have started going to the local sauna house in my city sauna house there's a thing called like cold therapy or contrast therapy i think it's just called contrast therapy but you go in a sauna for like 10 15 minutes then you go into cold plunge and then you sit and you kind of let your body like shake and it's like your nervous system resetting and that can be really cool like if you're going through a lot of fear and anxiety um a hot cold session is really fun and i think Mine is like $40, but like, it's not bad for like a fully kind of state changing embodied experience. It's, it's pretty cool. I always come out feeling like a badass and, and, and just refresh and just like shockingly like grounded in my body and just like connected to my spine where I'm just like, oh, I'm not in this like frenetic state anymore. I'm like up here. I'm like, whew. so I like sauna house for that. There's a bunch of them around. Maybe there's one near you. Um, and I want to leave you as we wrap up with this quote that my massage therapist said to me, because recently I had a really great session with her and she's just fabulous and incredibly talented. She's given me the best massages I've ever had. And part of that is because she has like a ton of somatic training, like nervous system, like basically helping you release like pain, emotional pain that's trapped in the body. A lot of times trapped in like the hips and the abdomen. And, um, and it's amazing. She'll just like massage in this very gentle, very compassionate way. At first I was like, this massage is not going to cut it. This is like not deep tissue enough. I'm like, I want a massage, but she has such a like guided touch She's really helped me heal and release stuff. But this last time I saw her, I, it just was an incredible session. I went in, like, not really knowing what to expect. And just, like, this emo- these emotions came up that she, like, was there to just be with me for. And, like, and it made me cry. And I felt just, like, lighter afterwards. And she was like, great job. And I was like, oh, thanks. Like, I don't know. You make it very easy. But, um, but we were chatting afterwards. And I was like, it's amazing. I was like, how does like, how do you, how do we, how does that work? And she, and she goes, she's like, when you listen to the body, it's amazing how much information is there. And I just loved that. When you listen to the body, it's amazing how much information is there. But in this kind of workaholic culture, we're not encouraged to slow down and listen to our body. And a lot of times, even if we are in a place where we slow down and listen to our body, it can be just scary to hear what we find. Um, so yeah, so I do recommend connecting with a massage therapist if that sounds like something that could be helpful to you. If you have like a pull towards that, um, I'd encourage you to to find a, a massage therapist who specializes in somatic release um, or trauma release exercises. She also taught this workshop I took from her. Uh, TRE is a trauma release exercise kind of thing. And so I do that too, where I do these like leg exercises to kind of tire out these muscles. And then I lay down and let my like, so as muscles where a lot of trauma is trapped, I let them like shake through my legs and it just like releases this emotional charge and I've done it. And sometimes I've cried. Sometimes I've felt really angry. Sometimes I've laughed and it's just amazing. Like what, what you can just kind of release. And I just tend to feel lighter afterwards. I often feel really tired and I'm just like ready to sleep, 
but so much healing comes from rest and just letting your nervous system become familiar again with like what calm feels like. And, um, yeah, so now I'm going to go back to sleep. This was really fun hanging out with you. Thanks for, thanks for tuning in. And I look forward to doing this again next week. Uh, for those watching the YouTube replay, you can join next week live if you want. Saturday, 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And the link is in my bio for my Soulful Screenwriting Instagram account, which is at soulful.screenwriting. And then just click link in bio, and then it's like Zoom room location. Click on that, and it'll take you to this workshop, and then we can hang out. And if you want to ask questions live, you can do that. Um, but yeah, thanks so much. Enjoy a week of body love and shower thoughts. Um, oh, I didn't mention this, but also like self-massage is great. But even even more than that, just like kind of sensual self-touch is like <laughs> something I'm trying to like spend more time doing mostly because my friend who's just like a vibrant soul was like, you have to do it. She's like, you have to spend sensual time with yourself. And I was like, I believe you. This is very inspiring to me. Um, but yeah, just like, you know, even just like the way you wash your face with like face wash, just like encouraging yourself to slow down and be gentle and just really treat yourself like you'd want an ideal lover to, um, Show yourself that body love, that self-love to yourself. I need more sleep. I feel like I was not the most articulate during this session, but that's okay. I, I, I like who I am, and I think it's adorable that I'm so tired from Shrek Rave. It was really fun. All right. Um, have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.